Hi, good morning again, guys. So I'm here with the lovely Diane, and I wanted to show you. She's like a client I've had for ages. I don't know how long. Uh, I don't know, 13 years, something. Has it been that long? 10 years. A long time. Least for sure. Well, at least how old was Larissa? She was... Oh, because, yeah, you've been making her those little gingerbread houses for an eternity. So if you've ever, if you've been one of my Facebook friends for a million years and you've ever seen my daughter's pictures of her making the amazing gingerbread houses, the kits come from lovely Diane here. And so, anyway, she's here with me. I just put a fix it on if you're wondering what I did. She's already prepped. The reason I wanted to come in here and show you her nails is because she has our lovely ski jumps. So her ski jump really good. And... Forever, I was fighting with trying to get product not to lift on her nails. It's really, if you've had clients with ski jump nails, it can be really a, a challenge for sure. Um, and so I have finally discovered that if I use dun -dun -dun, Options Crystal Clear, she gets absolutely zero lifting. Um, even better than some of my clients who don't maybe get much lifting, but maybe a little hairline bits. She literally has not even a smidge. So I wanted to show you how, A, to announce to you that we now have large jars of Options Crystal Clear at Love Nails. So if you are um, one of our nail techs who likes to use Options Crystal Clear a lot, and I know there's quite a few of you out there that have started using it on many of your clients, um, you can now get it, look at that, see the little bit of, that's the hibiscus pink from the last client, or no, the hypnotic coral. It just pushes out through the brush and then I just wipe it off and it comes right off. Um, that's how you clean your brush. <laughs> um, so it is available in the large jar. I believe they are, go ahead and put that in. The light, please. They are about 88, 80. Oh, I didn't see. I did not do a fix it on this one. Since Salon Bella, when you used to work there. Salon Bella. So Salon Bella was, I did five years at my last salon. And I've been here for two, so at least seven. It's been seven years mm -hmm. since I've been at Salon Bella. And I was seeing you there for a while before you moved. Right. So. Long time. Long time. Love you, long time. Mm -hmm. All right. So Fix It is on. I just want to give that oh, about a minute to dry. So I'm going to open the crystal clear. So this crystal clear is a 1.6 ounce. It's the same size as our other large ones. Oh, it's one of these lids. So with these kind of lids, I find the little tab and I pull it up like that because I hate peeling the foil. It really is annoying. So that's how I open that because I hate peeling the foil crap. It really drives me nuts. So if you travel quite a bit, you're going to want to save this plastic bit because your options crystal clear is runny. Um, but this isn't really the size jar that's designed to be traveled with. This is the size jar that's designed to sit on your table all the time. So if you're traveling, I suggest just using a little one. Um, and uh, well, this little one right now is OptiBond. So this is the bonding gel that I use pretty much on everybody. You can use um, X-Bond. With this, it is designed to be used with this as well if you prefer using bonding gel that is uh, in a bottle as opposed to a pot. Um, I am faster and I feel like I'm a little bit more exacting with um, my brush and my pot, so that's why I still use OptiBond. Oh, I should probably turn this on and see if we have questions. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hold on one second, and I will answer any questions that you might have. I was not doing my job. We were chatting about all things. All right, go ahead and put that in. I'm trying to keep a tablet next to my table so that I can answer any questions that might pop up. See if we can find it real quick. Oh, my friends, there we go. All right. Who is here with us? I don't know. Ah, oh, Nancy, Ursula, Trisha, Megan, Teresa, Stacy. Hello, everybody. All right. 
Sorry about that, it took a second. Okay, so tricks with using your options crystal clear. This is a runnier gel. You can see the viscosity is quite fluid in this, probably even a little more so than um, your Enhance. And your client's nails are gonna be different. Hers are very C-curved. If you look down the barrel, you can see she's got a very, very defined C-curve. And I have learned from experience that if I don't just flash cure these in between each nail, I chase after it and it drives me crazy. So I actually will do one nail with this and flash cure. Now when you do a ski jump, you wanna create a little bit of an arch so that it, it doesn't continue to look ski jump. You want it to look like it comes down. So after I brush it on the nail, I'll look at it from the side and if I need to add a little bit more in the middle just to create the correct arch, you can drizzle that on and it's gonna melt right into your wet layer. All right, go ahead and put that in. And I'm just gonna go back and forth. So this will um, make it so that I'm not wasting any time. Your client knows after each nail just to give you your other hand and it goes quite quickly. Let's see if I can get some better light. Sorry guys, there we go. Sometimes my phone like just blocks the light. So your Options Crystal Clear. Options is a soak off gel. And yes, there's one called Clear, one that's called Crystal Clear. The difference is that the Options Clear is more flexible. Options Crystal Clear is a harder gel. So more like, you know, your classic hard gels that clients like under their color so that they feel like they have hard, strong, natural nails. So if you are looking for a harder gel that will soak off, um, then you can use Options Crystal Clear. Now, do I ever soak off? No. Um, so the fact that it soaks off really doesn't matter to me, but if you are doing party sets or a temporary set and you needed someone that needed to be able to soak them off, then you technically could. Um, but I, yeah, don't ever do that. How did I come up with the 30 day mani? Well, quite the story. So back at Salon Bella, actually, we were just talking about that a million years ago, about eight years ago, um, Accents had our colored gels in the pot. So like uh, Hypnotic Coral, um, Hibiscus Pink was a popular one. So I had a lovely client, you know Diane Denny? Yeah. Yeah, Diane Denny. Start with Diane Denny. Mm -hmm. So Diane would come in and she can grow beautiful, long, natural nails, which was great. But, um, and we would put just the options color on them. But every now and then, and almost every time really, she would get a stress crack. And a stress crack is what occurs right about here. And because it's her natural nail and she's got the flexibility but she ends up with the stress crack, I started patching her stress crack with hard gel. So I would just do a thin coat of hard gel under her color and I would end up with this lovely patch and then her natural nail wouldn't continue to break. And after a while, probably, I don't know, three, four, five months, she said, can you just put that on all of them so that they won't keep cracking? Because I'd patch one and then the next time she'd come in, she'd have another one that would have a stress crack because she would grow them quite long. And, um, I'm just checking. There's an indent in here, and I don't like it. So, okay, go ahead and put that in. So she would do, um, so she asked me, okay, can you just put them on all the nails? And I said, okay, sure. So I started putting them on the, all the nails underneath her hard gel layer, and a couple things happened that was really nice. One, when you file off color, like you use your e-file, and you e-file off just color on the natural nail, because that color is soak off and it's porous, it's gonna get hot or it gets hotter than a hard gel would. And for people that use acrylic, they deal with porous products all the time. They're used to it getting hot. Me, I deal with hard gel all the time. I don't like it when it gets hot for people. So what happened with that base layer of hard gel is that it no longer got hot when I would e-file the color off. It was much easier for me because I could e-file off the color quickly without having to dance all over with it getting warm, which was great. Um, for her, she could not worry about her natural nail breaking underneath the color anymore. So that, my friends, is how I created the 30-day manicure. So it just is that thin layer of hard gel under the color. And the reason it works is because the colored gels I'm using are flexible. If you're using a gel polish and it's not a flexible gel polish, if it's one that's made with a lot of nail polish in it, that nail polish ages and it gets brittle and that's why you start seeing 
a lot more cracking and chipping at that three week mark. Um, if you're using a, a gel polish that's 100% polish it or 100% gel, it shouldn't be aging and you shouldn't see that cracking or chipping, which is nice. Um, so if you're using a nice flexible gel polish, then you can do the 30 day manicure and have a nice thin hard gel layer and not have to worry about it. So as you know, might notice, I'm adding a little bit more gel to her nails than I might with a normal 30 day manicure because I'm accounting for the fact that they tend to ski jump and I want to create a nice shape on her nail. I don't want it to be totally flat and I don't want it to continue to ski jump. So if you look at the side, you get a really nice fluid shape to her nail by just adding a little bit more to the pillow area when I pull it back. And you can keep it really thin. So see how over here it's super, super thin? That's fine. You don't need strength in this area. You want your strength to be in the center. So if you pay attention to where your strength areas are, you can keep the nails thin in the places where it's important. So this is a really quick way to do your fill. Now your options, your soak off uh, gels are gonna be a little bit more expensive. So a typical hard gel um, pot of UV gel is, I wanna say $61.95 for this size. If you are doing it with um, performance gel, they're just under $70. This gel is under just under $90. So it is a little bit more expensive. So if you're watching your pricing or watching your expenses in the salon, I wouldn't use this on every client because it is a more expensive gel and it's not necessary. But it's certainly important to have when you have clients that need it. So go ahead and put that in. Do you know if the color isn't vastly polish more than gel? Um, I, I can't say that for every product, you're gonna know right off the bat if it's more polish. If you see a lot more chipping with it, you're probably gonna find that it's gonna be more polish than it is gel. You want pink and bright white? Yes. Okay. Ooh, looking for delicate, is it out? All right, so um, a lot of it, you can smell your gel polish. If you, um, this is my lovely delicate, it's well loved, so is my polar. <laughs> well loved, I wipe them off all the time, but every time I shake it, they get a little bit crazy. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be using doing a French on her, so we're using delicate and polar. So this options crystal clear, uh, only takes 30 seconds in the light to cure, so it's ready to go. There's a little bit of something hanging out. It's gonna get in my way. Here we go. Um, so you can smell your gel polish, and if it smells like strong nail polish, there's a good chance that there's it's made with a lot of polish. Um, but test it out. If you're getting a lot of chipping, then you might need some more flexibility, whether it's um, covering it with something like options clear that adds more flexibility. Okay, this is almost empty and it's gonna drive me crazy. Hold on. I need a new one. Is Harry behind me on the couch? Yeah. Yeah, he's sleeping. She's got her cute little puppy here and he's over there sleeping, having a good old rest. All right. Oh, Tanya, hello, darling. All right, so I've just got a new, well, it's semi-new. I think I used it at a class, so it's got a little dust on it, but it's definitely in better shape as far as the bottle goes. So here is um, Delicate, and it's a nice pink. It's a little bit sheer. I'm just going to do it again over here because I want to make sure we got good coverage. It's so much easier than fighting with bottles. So what my suggestion is, is with Luxio, because it's solvent-free, it's never going to get thick in the bottle, is save it. Save your bottle. Um when it goes low and get a new one. And then after, I don't know, using it 10 or 15 times, you'll have cleared enough space in your bottle. You can literally just flip one on top of the other and um, give it 15 minutes or so and it will combine. And uh, you can end up with using every last drop of it. So don't toss it when it's starting to drive you crazy. Get a new bottle and put the old bottle aside and. Combine it a little bit later when you need to. 
So when I do French, there's a couple tricks that I do. And this is with polished French. So this is a bit different than the backfill French that I did last week. I use, I do this version much, much more often. So I'm just gonna take my wipe with a little bit of prep and wipe on it. I need my 107 brush and my regular 106. And what I'm gonna do is brush off the pink off of the tip. And the reason I do this is to keep your tip thin. If you don't brush um, your pink off the tip and you just pile pink on and then white on, you end up with a thick nail and you also can get a, a ledge a lot easier. So if you just brush off the tip, it makes life a lot simpler. So you don't wanna swipe it. So if you swipe, um, just like try to pull it like that, what you're gonna end up with is a ledge of pink. So don't swipe your pink off the tip, literally just wipe it down. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's kinda gonna move together, so it's not a big deal. But this pink makes a nice color onto the nail. Especially for summer. Yeah, especially for summer, or if people like that pink and white. You can do one coat or two, so you can do the first coat and then have your client look at it and say, okay, do you want it just like that or would you like a little bit more pink and they can choose and then you can either do a second coat or not on diane i typically do two coats mm. looks good though looks kind of natural now yeah it's a definitely more neutral look when you just do one but it gives her a nice color she's got a little bit more of a whitish tone to her nail bed so it definitely adds a little bit more color to it which is Great. Okay. Just brush it down from corner to corner. Again, it does not have to be perfect. You just wanna remove this so that when you put your white down, it's not sitting on top of your pink. Delicate and blush are must-haves. All right, would you like a second coat of pink or just one? A second coat. Okay. Yes, we she normally do two. I, like. I do. So normally you two don't coat. even ask me. You do I don't. Best. I just do it. Well, because every time I do ask, you always yeah. say a second coat, yeah. so I stopped asking. And she came in with, I want to say chic on her mm -hmm, nails, which probably. is her other favorite. It's a gorgeous pink color that has a little bit of pearl to it. So if you don't have chic, it's also a big must have. So yeah, delicate and blush are must haves. Haven is a newer, our newest one in that kind of family of semi shears. And it's more of a white um, just very, very pale, not near as much color as blush or delicate, but for someone that wants kind of, I think bubble bath is what people say it's the closest to that kind of sheer, almost white. Oh, that's not good. Whatever that was needs to not be there. Okay. And then I'm going to take my brush. Oh, that's the wrong brush. Brush, brush, brush. Fuzz. Black fuzz. Okay, and just brush off. I'm just going to check this corner. It looked like it was trying to get in the cuticle, but it's good. Okay, go in light, please. Hey, Denise. Hi, Diane. So second coat of Delicate. Some interesting stuff going on in your nails. 
Yeah, you know, I just wanted to do something different. I want to, this is super easy, that marbling. Um, the lines took a while, and I want to kind of play with some stamping and some other stuff. And, um, <laughs> oh, my friend Sarah just said, remember when I used to carry my caboodle around doing my nails? So, Back, I don't even know if you know this. So back before I did nails, I was in college at in Reno and then at Wazoo. And I always got my nails done in high school, always, because I'm a nail biter. That's my ugly secret, but a lot of nail techs are, surprise. Um, a lot of nail techs are secret nail biters. We It becomes our world because you have to get your nails done. Otherwise, you mess with your nails too much pick at them and find all the spots and it just you have to have your nails done so my first year in college I uh didn't have nails because I went from Vegas to Reno I grew up in Vegas and went to Reno and didn't have nails and I hated it and my second year in college I had a roommate and she did her own nails and I'm like what you can do yours do I can nails. do mine so I was like where do you get stuff <laughs> Kara, I didn't see you. Oh, how can I not? That wasn't nude. That's delicate. It might look, look nude on here, but it's pink. Sorry. All right. So this is polar, uh, and I'm only going to need one coat of polar to do my French. I'm going to put it on and then wipe the smile line. So um, back to college. So I asked her, I said, where do you get your stuff? And she goes, oh, Sally's. And I said, all right. So go to Sally's and get what I think I need. Don't really know grab stuff, went back, and I think I watched a Friends Marathon for like six hours doing my nails the first time, which, you know, to be honest, it still takes almost that much time because now we like try to get all fancy with what we're doing. And, you, can, you know, when you're doing gel, of course, at the time it was acrylic because this was like 16, 17 years ago. So it was a minute ago. Um, and so I did it myself. And so for a couple of years... I had a little caboodle, which I did see somewhere. They are making a comeback. What is a caboodle? They're like a make. They're like the hard shell makeup cases with a handle. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so they were around, you know, forever for a long time, and then they weren't quite as popular. And now they've started making comebacks. Someone took a picture of one. I was like, look what I found. Mm -hmm. So I had a caboodle, and I had tons of nail polish in there, and. Um, my stuff and when I traveled if I was in my car I would take it with me and I even was in a car accident once and oh my gosh one of the bottles of polish broke and I was like no so of course my caboodle is covered and it was a white pearl in white pearl polish I was at that hotel trying to clean that out forever all right so after I get my white on I do four fingers and then I do the thumb separate I'm gonna wipe the smile line Which you're an expert at. I get compliments all the time. On your smile lines? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. I need to see better, though. I know that was perfect, but I try. I had to hit this one with my nail. Now, if you get a little... If you don't clean your brush between every wipe, that's how you get white streaks across your pink. So you wanna make sure after every wipe, you clean your brush. And then after you've wiped it, it starts to move because gel will move on a slick surface. And so sometimes I'll have to go back and kind of check it and do it again if I'm not happy. Because if it moves a little bit, I get annoyed. Is that because of my nails? or is that No, it's because you're working on a slick layer now so you've moved gel off of an area where it wasn't slick and now when you wipe it you've created a slick layer and it will now yeah, has nothing to do with you it just it's just how it is um if i wanted to spend more time and be super careful and just make a perfect smile line every time you know like you just very carefully go around and try to make it perfect every time. You can totally do that, but I find that I'm faster just getting it on and wiping the smile line, and also my smile lines are more consistent. So the only time I really do it where I'm like so super like, 
careful as I'm making this. My line is in competition because I have half an hour. Um, and I try to spend like five minutes on red and then 20 minutes doing my small lines and getting my French done. So it's, I spend a lot more time on it um, in that sense. And in this, I just, I feel like I get a more consistent shape if I can just wipe it in. Just gotta clean it. Nothing makes more crazy than someone that's pink and white and the white is high up on the nail. This one is medium high. So the reason I do it as where it's at is because some of her nails already have, um, we're almost down into the smile line wiping this anyway. Um, she wears them a little bit longer and she goes three to four weeks. And so if I do it too low, then we're actually going to see through it and you're going to see her natural nail, which we don't want. So I do it just above where her natural smile is so that um, we can make sure we get a little bit of grow out before it shows up too much. If someone wants a really skinny um, white tip and they're wearing them this long where you'd see a shadow, you would need to use a solid on the nail bed so that otherwise you're gonna see through it and you're gonna see their natural smile line and that's not pretty. So you would need to use a solid and then do your white tip with a very thin white. I have a couple, I have one client who likes big whites because no joke, she goes two months, it drives Gosh. me crazy. She'll paint them in between, she'll paint them black. So it's grown out to like here and then uh. she just paints it all black and I, I don't, to each their own, yeah. you know, and then I, she comes back in and I file it off and she never has lifting or anything. She's, wow. her nails stay on perfectly fine, but they just, she likes the French as long as she can have it because she's got great, beautiful long nail beds. And so it, it's, it's interesting, but I won't let her go so long that it looks ghetto. I don't do ghetto nails, so I won't let her have it maybe as much white as she probably would like because I refuse. They're still my nails. Mm -hmm. You may be wearing them, but it's my name all over them. Mm -hmm morning Beth. All right. I'll give that a good squeeze so it's nice and flush. And again, this is Polar. Polar is um, fabulous in that it's, an, it's our brightest white, but you can definitely do it in one coat and it's not going to wrinkle. It's not going to do anything funky or anything like that. So you can get it on and... Um, it's perfect. So with gloss, oh, that smile line is funky. It's because it moved a little on the side. Let's see if I can make it look better without it driving me crazy. All right, I'm going to fix this. A little bit because I don't like it. Oh, I got some on your skin. Looks like I dribbled right onto her. All right, so in the event you have a smile line that doesn't look to your standards, you can go right over it again. It just had a funny wave to it. All right, let me put that in. That's better. Okay. So top coating. I'm going to use Luxio Gloss. If you look at the side, you can see that because I removed that pink, you don't have a huge ledge right there. It's not going to have a problem. You're not going to end up with a big bump where your white is. You can float your gloss over. and it's gonna smooth out and self-level. See the line of light? It's perfect. What did Kara say? I'm gonna have withdrawals what? What does that say? 
It's me having my glasses. You don't have your glasses on? Yeah, it's just a blur. <laughs> oh my gosh, my husband, I have to laugh at him all the time. If he doesn't have his glasses on, his arm is going to fall off. Like he holds his hand, his arm out so I I, I think I'm far in front to of him. Have a LASIK. Maybe this next year I'll get to it. It just makes me laugh. All right, so I brush the gloss off the front because I want to make sure that this stays thin and I don't have a bump. And that I get a nice, perfect, smooth contour from the cuticle tip. I'm going to freeze that for a few seconds. Okay. <laughs> she's, Kara says she's had withdrawals not having just TV because I've been slacking about being on here. Oh. Yeah. But we do have 2,000 followers on YouTube now, though. So if you're one of my YouTube followers, thanks for joining us. It's kind of awesome because they're not like, you know, a lot of people have a million YouTube followers, but they're not like individual people. I get to see when everybody subscribes individually and it's, they're one by one, you know? They're not like I paid for some big package or something. All right. So that's it, guys. I'm just going to top coat these and finish the end of them. And I just wanted to come in and show you guys that we now have crystal clear. Yay! In the large pot. So if you need any, you can head over to lovenails.com and you can get um, your crystal clear in the large pot. If you are going to be traveling with it, keep the little lid on it so you don't get too much leaking. I just end up putting it on my desk. So, um, But just wanted to show you guys you can do that and then quick French. So we will catch you guys later. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.